Hello and welcome to the Battlefield Top Plays. In this week's episode, we have got 10 of the best clips that I've had sent in over the past few weeks. We're going to start off with an absolutely insane infantry clip that has been sent in by none other than Hexa. This guy produces quality Battlefield 4 content on his channel pretty much every day of the week. Well worth checking out. And as always, the players' channels will be linked down in the description below. You can go and check out Hexa and all the rest of them. Just click on the links. And this week's sponsor is, of course, Gamers Community, again, linked down in the description below. Now, as I've started with this little introduction, you've seen a accusation in the chat box and quite a few kills with a mixture of the secondary G18 and, of course, this primary M16A4. A very nice weapon to see being used on Battlefield 4. I know it's Operation Locker, something that you see far too much of, but you need to have Operation Locker or Metro in order to see this amount of kills, in my opinion. It's just not possible to get this KPM on other maps, or maybe it is possible, but it's not as common. This is a nice streak so far. Many people killed. Squad mates are being revived in the process and, of course, controlling the map. The streak goes on for quite some time. I'm going to let it play in the background. If you didn't already know, you can send in your clips to battlefieldtopplays at gmail.com and I'll showcase them every Sunday. When the next Battlefield comes out, I will be showcasing as many as possible. I think the next game is going to be fantastic fun for Battlefield Top Plays. I think it's going to be really great and we're going to have some epic moments in a similar way to how we did in BF3 and BF4. BF1 wasn't so bad. There were some good plays for sure, but it just didn't do what Battlefield 3 and 4 did for me in terms of top plays. Let's hope Battlefield 5 can really do the business. That being said, I'm going to let this clip play in the background. Hexa on locker with an M16 getting all the accusations. What more could you ask for with an infantry streak? Moving over from Battlefield 4, we're going to see a streak from Dexter on BF3 Metro, and I promised this to you last week. It's absolutely insane, this one. So many kills. Of course, it's on Operation Metro. You'd expect nothing less, especially when Dexter's playing. He is running with the G3A3, and as you can tell, he is going on a complete tear through the enemy team. So many of them bunched up in this doorway. They can't seem to get him. None of them really shoot back. I'm not sure what their problem is. He does get some damage from behind, but of course his teammates are holding that section of the map, so he can concentrate on this choke point here. Unfortunately, he gets taken out, but that's 1,400 points plus in the streak, and he will, of course, get a revive and continue this onslaught on the enemy team. Not too sure why the Battlefield 3 revive is a little bit buggy. Nonetheless, we skip forward through this little bug fest to get him back into the action, now, unfortunately, the point streak does stop, but I think that's got something to do with a bug or some lag in the game because he does then pick it up as he comes through the Metro carriage there. Not too sure what was going on, but nonetheless, back onto the streak, nearly 2,000 points in it currently. Now, the reason I enjoy watching Dexter and the reason I think a lot of other players and a lot of other viewers should check out his channel is just because of the aggressive playstyle. The fact he's playing BF3 is pretty damn cool. Not enough people play this epic game and hopefully BF5 does come back to some of the roots of BF3 because I think people really do enjoy the infantry gameplay in this game. Unfortunately, the servers are a bit crap, but the rest of it is really good fun. And what he tends to do is just push enemies non-stop and consistently racks up these incredible streaks. In this case, the enemy team don't really seem to have a clue what's going on playing on a game of Rush. He is just benefiting from these flanking maneuvers, which is what Metro is so perfect for. Whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny that the flanking routes, when you pull them off, are the most satisfying thing you can do on BF3, or at least one of them. It's absolutely brilliant fun. Next up, we've got a clip sent in from Savon Jenki. He's going to be playing on BF1. He's going to be playing on 
Ballroom Blitz pulling off a very, very tidy sniper streak with the SMLE. Now this is a weapon that everybody uses and I've actually got a video coming out next week showcasing the amount of people that do use this weapon on BF1. Now the game is coming to the end of its life. I say the end of its life, people are going to play this game for a while, but I mean the next battlefield's coming out. So it'll be the time of BF5 and no longer the time of BF1. So I'll be going over the weapon stats over the past year and a half to two years, which is quite interesting. Back to the clip, capping Alpha, 2,000 points in the streak, a quick headshot on that guy, and then this dude jumps off the ledge, gets a headshot for his troubles, 3,000 points, kill this guy, racking up 3,200 points, and then a quick scope and a quick Mars automatic secondary follow-up shot to complete the streak. Now we've got a clip sent in from Sal Player 96 He's going to be playing on Foul Fortress, and this guy has sent in a clip, a couple of clips actually, that got me wondering. I don't know what the deal is with his playstyle, but he seems to have a very weird flick on his shots, and it almost looks a bit suspicious. I don't want to say anything, I don't like accusing people of cheating. But you saw there with that with the second clip, that first shot, the little flick, it did look a little unusual. But the thing is, this guy has sent in a lot of clips in the past that don't look like this. So I think he could just be attempting to look a bit more suspicious, if you know what I mean. He's flicking onto shots a lot more. And the more skillful players can do that. If you ever watch Shroud play pretty much any game, I know he doesn't play Battlefield, but if you watch him play any game, his play style does look like an aimpot, which he's not cheating but it can look that way. So make of it what you will. A very nice clip anyway, finishing off with a couple more snipes on enemies. So another clip sent in from Saug Player. He was playing on Sinai Desert again. It's a fairly long clip, a bit of a kill streak, but I've just cut it to the end part, which was quite interesting to watch. He's capping Alpha. He's got some points in the streak. He manages to pick himself up a collateral on an enemy and his buddy there. Not too sure how that managed to happen, probably by luck, 2,000 points, and then pulls off that shot there. Very, very interesting stuff. A nice shot nonetheless following the collapse. Moving on, we've got a clip sent in from e yen 98 playing on Saritzin with the Ross Mark III Marksman. Probably my favorite sniper rifle in the game, as I often say. I did enjoy it being added, especially as it will combat that SMLE in terms of the sweet spot. And e yen is just going on an absolute tear here. The enemy team is getting completely destroyed. You can tell by the scoreboard that this is just a dominating performance. So many kills. Not in the sweet spot range by the looks of things, but it doesn't really matter because there's so many enemies, his aim is that good. That was a nice headshot on that dude running across in the open. So far, so good. A lot of kills, making use again of this position. And this is where you are really going to see the advantage of a smart positioning. As players have to move from left to right, he can take up this position and just take them out as they're not even suspecting getting shot. Towards the end of the clip, they do start to realize that there are enemy players over here. But as you can see, look at this position he's got pointing towards Alpha. It's brilliant stuff. Unfortunately, gets taken out, but a great clip. Next up, we're moving on to a clip sent in from Naki. He's starting things off with the brand new Annihilator Trench and, of course, the Combat Knife. This is a bit of a kit-switching kill streak. I'm not too sure what to make of the Annihilator Trench. It's just another hip-firing, fast-firing SMG. I know it's got a small ammo capacity and a small magazine, which means that you're going to be struggling against multiple enemies, while the SMG-08 and even still the Hell Regal will do the job of taking out multiple guys. To be honest, even the MP-18 will do a job if you've got decent accuracy. That being said, I know people do get frustrated with these fast-firing close range SMGs, switching it out to a different kit. Now he's going to push Bravo objective, looking to see if he can get a quick revive on that teammate working out if the coast is clear. Of course it's not. There is a camper inside. Howl automatic sniper gets him up out of there. Still not pushing this friendly player to revive him, but the reason is you've got enemies all around you. That player could have waited. It didn't have to skip. You can wait for the whole time and then get picked up by a squad mate or a teammate. In that case, I think Naki maybe could have pushed and revived him, but you never know as a player like this. You don't want to risk getting yourself killed and then getting the teammate that you just revived killed as well. You might as well stay alive yourself in a lot of situations. Very nice use of the howl at range there, getting rid of that guy. And as suspected, enemies surrounding the bunker on this other side two of them taken down with an m1911 switching kits out to a hell regal mixture of the hatchet needed to be used just because ammo was running low m1911 into that guy's behind gets him taken out of the trench overall a very nice kit switching clip 
A quick clip sent in from Icebox, a very long range headshot with the M1903 sniper. That was incredibly long range indeed. Nice to see. And then we're moving on to some BF4. This clip has been sent in by the master. He's playing on the Gormwood Railway in the attack jet and just casually JDAMs somebody out of their jet. A very nice clip indeed. Next up, we've got a clip sent in from Plowing Your Mum. I thought I'd let this one run with the commentary because I always enjoy the stuff that these guys get up to in game. Oh, oh shit, I got it. I got it. The C-130? Yeah. With the tank? Yeah. Please tell me you uh, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Finally today we have a clip sent in from Tinmar, he's going to be playing on Operation Firestorm again in the attack jet, we've got a couple of these today, looking to take out enemy aircraft, the first one being this attack helicopter, oh dear he is going to get absolutely destroyed, just JDAM him, could have taken him out with the main cannons but a JDAM is just what you want to be doing in this situation, moving forward towards Charlie objective spots another helicopter to take down, this time going for the rendezvous, unfortunately I think he miscalculated slightly and couldn't manage to get back in nonetheless. Two attack cullies taken down. Very nice work indeed. Thanks for sending in the clip. Thanks for watching this week's episode. If you did enjoy it, leave a like down below. Remember to send your clips into battlefieldtopplayers at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to BF5. Hopefully it will be as good as we're all expecting. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.